All right, well, let's get started. <clears throat> Good afternoon, attendees. I appreciate your time in joining us today. My name is Sean Duclo. I'm the VP of Marketing for LionGuard, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to our webinar today on maximizing revenue and minimizing your revenue leakage. Today, we're going to dive deep into the secrets in success, and we're going to share uh, industry insights, some success stories, some actionable strategies that you can take steps and implement immediately. I do have you muted, but don't, don't forget to fire away your questions in the chat. We're here to engage, so we're going to get started. So just recently, uh, and I would like uh, you can put this in the chat, that I was speaking with some peers over at Acronis, and they had done a survey about what was the biggest challenge managing their technology tool stack. So just drop it in the chat. Out of these four choices, uh, what would you say is your Mount Everest of technology? Interoperability, UI management, time tracking and billing, or something else? Fantastic. Many of you chose time tracking and billing, which says you're in the right place for this webinar. And it was actually also shown that 43% of the respondents to the Acronis survey also said it was billing and time tracking. Now, I guess as the resident marketing guy, I guess this is one of my areas of growth uh, and improvement. I ought to find those 43% of the people and invite them to the webinar, but that's a miss on my part. But uh, then again, unless someone takes the mic from my hand and we can continue the bad jokes, uh, we'll get started and introduce the real stars of the show. So first of all, we have Kendrick Hawkins. Kendrick's is LionGuard's partner success leader. He's a pro at making things run smoothly and bringing teams together. Kendrick's has about 20 years of experience in the tech game, and he's handled IT setups for the largest and most complex to the smallest and the fastest companies alike. Kendrick simply just has a knack for not just knowing IT inside and out, but also being one of the great leaders at LionGuard. Think about Kendrick's as the architect who builds super effective departments within companies and then gets outstanding results. Now flipping over to Colin, Colin is not your average entrepreneur, right? He's the powerhouse of inspiration and true visionary. Where most of us see problems Colin sees a canvas for innovation. He is a two-time disruptor in his own category. He's the mastermind behind turning startups into market giants. He has actually accumulated a whopping over nine figures of enterprise value. As the CEO founder and, and co-founder of Gradient, he also founded Pass Portal, which was quickly snatched up by Solar Windsor Enable back in 2019 and also Excel Professional Services, uh, which was embraced by F12.net a few years prior to that in 2016. Colin is an architect of success. He's built empires with just a little bit of touch of that entrepreneurial magic. Now we'll get started and turn it over to Kendricks. The floor is yours, sir. Thanks, Sean. So as Sean alluded to at the top, you know, 43% of the people uh, the big, biggest challenge for them is the billing and time tracking. So let me ask you all, how confident are you in your accuracy of your invoices? Let's see if we can get some answers here real quick before we actually reveal it. Yep, add that to the chat. So Kendricks, I'll read from the chat. We have 45%. We have 60%. No confidence at all. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Okay. Um, then I have a very confident. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. We have someone who's very confident, but for the vast majority of people, uh, they're not as confident. They're, uh, 39% is what I was looking for. So, uh, someone was very close at 45%, but um, then we had someone at 60 and then someone with no confidence. So you, you're in the right place. Let me just tell you that. But 39% of invoices contain errors ranging from simple mistakes, like billing, all kinds of things that, that make, you, make you miss out on revenue. So the most MSPs and IT solution providers pride themselves in 
being fast and being nimble and responding to their clients and solving their issues. So let me ask you, why is it that we're willing to accept billing not being as accurate as it possibly can uh, at a 60% rate? So what we're going to do is when we're, we're going to go through this, we're going to talk through a lot of these things and how we can get those things in order so you can feel a lot more confident in the way that you're building things. You, you have to think about how this impacts your bottom line as well. So the struggle starts with the operational side of things. Uh, strangely enough, um, the struggle is, is tracking all of these things. You got a ton of systems that uh, are in our infrastructures that we have to manage and maintain. Now, think about the systems that you have. Just just think of, think about that. Hold that in your in, in your mind here as we step through this. You look at all of these things here. Uh, some of these or a lot of these or uh, not all of them are, are things that LineGuard integrates with. There is a tremendous amount of software sprawl here. Uh, we, I know we feel it here. I know you're probably feeling it there. Not only software, but hardware sprawl as well. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, within these things, there are three potential parties that are driving changes within these all of these environments. You have your internal team. You have your the external teams uh, that need access to these things. And then you have the people that you don't want in there, the intruders, right? And so being, it's a struggle keeping up with all the configuration changes that are happening across the stack here, uh, not only from your team and the external teams, but also intruders. And so it, it's very important for those configurations to be tight so you can be secure. All right, I want you to look at this and I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna ask a question, I'm gonna pause here for a second because I do really wanna get your answers here. Look at this chart here that's in front of you and I want you to, to point out some things that you feel like that are wrong or, or I won't say wrong, but are, are challenges within this process. So I'm gonna take a quick pause here and allow you to answer. What are some of the things that could go wrong is what I'm asking for here. Too many people. I'm the reason for the chat. <laughs> Too many people. What Not about only what another one is doing? That's a good one. Spreadsheets, spreadsheets, spreadsheets. Oh, death by spreadsheet. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't pick on my Excel table, my Excel files. <laughs> one that I see on there right now is it just spelled out the manual effort. The manual effort is when you put the manual effort in there with the too many people and the many, many millions of spreadsheets that you have, if you think about that, you're prone to have some error. Uh, there are multiple problems that you can actually incur uh, with this model that you're seeing here. Uh, one of you mentioned it, you have a communication breakdown. You know, the information doesn't flow seamlessly between all of these roles. Uh, the lack of communication, it leads to like misunderstandings, missing details, and just general lack of clarity. Uh, then you also can, can run into duplicate efforts. How many of you have, have spent time doing something just to find out someone else has done it? You know, it's a massive waste of your time and your resources. Uh, and just think about how much you're paid and how, how much those other people are paid and just think about how money how much money you're throwing away there. So think about that. And I want you to think about this as well. We talked about those spreadsheets. One of you mentioned spreadsheets. So think about other places that you may store your documentation information. Uh, think of things like uh, tracking and managing your Office 365 or Microsoft 365 uh, accounts, the users that are in there, uh, how, when they're at it and when they're off or things like that. Think about that, you know, and what are the, the, the tools and the processes that you use today to try and keep a handle on all of those things? You have delayed billing cycles is another one. When the inf information it, it takes time uh, to move between those teams, the billing process slows down. Uh, if you think about it, if you, you're going from the sales, you, you're looking at this, this model here, you're going from the sales about, hey, this is what I sold. And it has to get all the way over to the billing department to make sure that it's billed the correct way. So that delay can affect cash flow and hinder your ability to prompt bills from clients and uh, for the service that you've that you've uh, rendered to them. Uh, so you're missing money. And if, if, once you figure it out, you're going to try, in essence, to recoup it. A lot of people are not just going to eat the cost. 
So then you have to add it to a future bill, which could cause friction. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with Colin. So addressing these issues between handing things off between these individuals that you see here, uh, your bill and reconciliation solution can not only improve your internal processes, but it also can ensure smoother, more reliable billing experience for your customers. So what does that lead to? Profit, accuracy, and efficiency. So I'm gonna go ahead and now and, and turn it over to Colin and I'll let him explain about the, this process and then also the effects of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at the last slide that you you walked through there and <clears throat> let's face it, in, in most MSPs, we're, we're running all over the place, trying to get so many things done. You're fighting fires, you're trying to get things um, fixed, you're trying to get new things deployed, you're trying to keep clients happy, everything else. But there's so many communication breakdowns that happen, right? Technicians deploy things based off of, you know, a service first attitude, and that never gets communicated or passed down to, to anybody else from account management or, or accounting, right? Or you have account management that goes and sells things and walks out the door, you know, brushing off and dusting off their hands, but doesn't properly get communicated back to maybe the technicians or the tech team to go out and deploy the actual solution. So now you're charging for something that's not being uh, delivered. And, and so what all this has led to is what the typical MSP billing process is, is you can't trust that the communication internally within the org is actually effectively managing things so that, you know, service delivery knows what's been sold, you know, account management and accounting knows what's been delivered and all of those things. So, you know, we talked about spreadsheets, spreadsheets, spreadsheets. Well, what does this mean that you end up doing every month? Is you're going out to every single vendor supplier you have, your backup solution, your email solutions, your email security, your 50 other security solutions, and going into their portals or logging into email systems to download all of these usage reports, all of these different spreadsheets that are all formatted a different way and look a different method and different structure. And you're spending two hours at least, we're hearing from other partners, you know, five, 10 hours alone, just gathering this information and, and pulling it together, right? Then, then is the next fun spot, depending on the size of your MSP and how many of those vendors you have and how many clients you have, because not every client uses every service, you spend the next five to 20 hours opening up your PSA agreements and having every single other uh, tab open or CSV open and you're looking at every single line item on every single contract, client by client, going through every product and just comparing it and trying to make sure that you know what's what, right? How much is every is every client actually using now and is that right? Then you get the next fun bit. Who loves any UI of any PSA out there? Nobody. Nobody's going to put their hands up, right? And we love these products. They do so much for us, but it's horrible. To update one single line item and quantity on one line item and one contract is an average of nine clicks in most PSAs, nine clicks. So you spend five to 20 hours, once you know what's actually different, then doing nine clicks on the times where you actually have to update it and going crazy and, and doing stuff, right? And then when you look at all of this, now you're updating that in your PSA, look at all the opportunity for human error in there. We're doing such a, we're looking at, on average, 17 different spreadsheets across an average of 35 different clients and doing thousands of mouse clicks. How likely is it, do you think, at one point you looked at the wrong line, typed in the wrong number, clicked the wrong contract line item, anything else, and this all comes out of whack? That's why 39% of invoices contain errors, because it could be a quantity issue, it could be a product listing issue, it could be you know, a, a myriad of different things. And so while you probably get a large part of your invoices are right, it's the ones that aren't right, right? You're never judged by how many things you did right. You're judged by the one thing you did wrong. And we know that so well as MSPs, right? 99% uptime, why the hell were we down for 1% of the time? That's not okay, right? That, that just doesn't bake with them. They ask what we're doing, what are we paying you for, everything else. Well, these are all the things that, that happen, right? That you can bill somebody right 24 times and on the 25th time you get one wrong, they're not going to scrutinize that invoice every single time from you. And it doesn't matter before, maybe they would have been fine if you were off by a count of one here or there. Not anymore, right? That that confidence drops down, you have this issue here, and that's where these all, all get sent out. So 
you know, you look at what are some of the implications of this now, things that are getting in the way of your, your business. So one is, is that lack of billing accuracy. So, you know, where, where that comes into play, hey, you've got situations where this impacts the last thing, poor professionalism. You know, if, they're, if they can't get the invoicing right, how do we know that they're getting other things right? How do, they, how do we know that they're on top of things? If they don't even know what we're getting, how do, how do, they, how do we know that they're delivering the right things to us? So, you know, there, there's that big challenge there. You've got your own process inefficiencies. You know, the reasons MSPs automate so many things is so they can do more, right? You have all these, whether it's a flat rate contract or, or all you can eat or however you're charging and, and selling your services, you need to be as effective and efficient as a business as possible. And that's not just on the delivery of service, because let's face it, in a lot of MSPs too, it's still the owner, it's still the president or somebody high up in that organization that's now doing this billing stuff. And, and we need to be able to automate that. When you look at the billing accuracy, you've got the cash flow issue. What we find is that MSPs are under billing by their services anywhere between five and 10% of all of their revenue, right? So you look at cash flow challenges, how many things are you delivering out to your clients today that you're actually not charging for? And it's simply because you haven't noticed, you just can't bother to take the time to go through this because we've got partners that they're, they previously were taking six days to do this. Well, there's not a lot of MSPs that can commit six days worth of effort on a monthly or quarterly basis even to go through this and, and do it. So you know, we're talking a lot about probably the life that you're living today and what you're going. You're saying, yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. But does it have to be this way? No, there's a different way. There's a much better way to go about all of this stuff. So when we, we start to walk through here, you know, I'll hand back over to Kendricks and he can start to talk through just some, some typical and, and common CIS controls and processes and policy of, of what comes into play with things like this. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, if you think about it, and we're talking about 10% and under billing, think about how much that affects your, your margin, your revenue and your margin uh, that you can collect there with that 10%. Uh, so recognizing these challenges that, that Colin highlighted, you know, we recognize that there's an urgent need for a solution that streamlines uh, the way that assets, users, software configurations, all that stuff is documented, right? Um, so how often do those handoffs between teams can be made like more seamless and automated? That way it's not that manual process, the thing that I called out in the, in the earlier slide there. You know, this, this really calls for uh, some perspective and a paradigm shift, if you will. Uh, there's a different way that, to operate to automatically document a, a customer's complete IT stack, uh, one that dismantles the silos, fosters seamless communication, and transform the billing process. So let's take a, take a look at it. So we have our uh, CIS control. CIS stands for, for those of you who don't know, Center for uh, Internet Security. And so let me ask you, like, how many of you, uh, just by yes and no's over in the chat, how many of you are familiar with the CIS controls? All right. We've got about, I'll do quick math in my head without a spreadsheet. Uh, we're about 75% yes and 25% no's. Okay. All right. Well, for those of you, let, let me, I'm going to take some steps through and kind of explain it at a high level for you. It's basically, if you want, want to describe it, it's an industry standard. It's, it's a widely recognized industry standard, if you will. Uh, it's certain, something like a, a roadmap uh, to strengthen you know, your security posture by addressing vulnerabilities, uh, by implementing robust cybersecurity measures. So there's a framework to the security. Uh, and, and it provides a, a, a structure for, for best practices to enhance the cyber defense of your infrastructure. It also mitigates uh, your, your risk. And, and so with those guidelines, it offers those, uh, those guidelines to manage and reduce the risk of cyber threats, uh, covering everything from data protection all the way over to your systems configuration. Now, it, we, what we want to do is we want to focus on four of these. So those four that we actually want to focus on are, uh, number one, our inventory and control uh, of hardware assets. Uh, what does that do? And, it's, it, and, and how does that relate to, to billing? 
if I can back up and kind of explain a little bit before we jump into those, you know, securities framework and the understanding of how it relates to the billing process uh, and efficiencies uh, is extremely important because if you have these controls in place, you, you're doing a couple of things here. You're securing your infrastructure, your customer's infrastructure, but then you're also setting yourself up to bill accurately as well. So we're, we're co collectively uh, form a, a robust foundation, ensure that uh, not only that the security of your systems, but also the contributing to the reliability and the accuracy of your billing for all of your customers as an MSP. So we talk about the first one there and billing accuracy. You know, accurate billing, it relies on knowing about the assets that you have, all of the hardware assets that you have for each client. And so that control, number one there, it ensures a comprehensive inventory, maximizing the risk of overlooking billable devices and services. Now we move on to the second one there, which is inventory and control of software assets. What that does is it helps the, the efficient uh, billing uh, of, the, of the software licenses that client has. Uh, it helps with managing uh, software assets and ensure compliance with licensing agreements and avoiding unexpected costs. Uh, how many of you will take Office 365 or Microsoft 365 as an example? How many of you have had licenses that were active that you had to pay for that you didn't even know that you could have, uh, that they were unassigned to someone and you should not have had to pay for them? How many of you have actually paid that bill? You, uh, Microsoft is probably not going to give that money back to you. Uh, you may, may be able to scream loud enough and maybe they will. Uh, the next one here is controlled use of administrative privileges. Uh, on a security level, you just don't want everyone to have administrative access. Uh, but it also affects the billing in a sense that if, if, we, if these people do have access to uh, these tools that, that, they have, that they have access to that they really shouldn't have or, or, or admin, then they can affect your configuration and, and quite frankly cause you to send an incorrect bill. You know, we want to restrict administrative privileges and reduce the risk of unauthorized access to billing systems to enhance overall security as well. Um, the last one there uh, of the four, secure configuration for hardware and software and mobile devices, laptops, workstations, and servers. Uh, billing invoices, you know, they handle sensitive client data. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is expose that client data. So this focuses on securing uh, the configuration, safeguarding clients' information, and minimizing the risk of data breaches that can impact your billing integrity. So Colin's going to talk a, a, a more about a solution in the process of how we can streamline this. Yeah, no, it's it's all good, right? We just we talked about the big process of of what the average MSP goes through today. When when it's end of month, time to reconcile billing, time to get billing out. You know, when you look at all of those things. Now, what what is the one compounding problem with that? <clears throat> purely is the amount of services that you're reselling. Again, I mentioned it earlier. The average MSP is reselling 17 different services through to their end customers. And majority of end customers are SMB. You have this variable and dynamic nature of those businesses growing, contracting, bringing on new clients, everything else that is really tough to take, uh, really take control of and, and get under wraps. So, you know, we came in and we look at <clears throat> LionGuard and you're using a solution like LionGuard to go out and collect a wealth of information to help feed the rest of your policies and how you're doing business, right? What is out there? How is it configured? Who's using it? What's happened? What's changed with it? All of these types of things that you're you're checking and detecting. And we kind of looked at that from a different angle and said, hey, if LionGuard has all of these systems under wraps and, and being monitored of what's in use, what's being used, how's it configured, what's changing, then we should be able to collect information out of LionGuard of how much of each service is essentially being used. And so what we're able to do is retrieve all of that information and get these usage counts pretty much across your entire stack of what you're reselling and ingest that into our synthesized platform. From there, we do a thing that we call automation with oversight. We'll talk a lot about automation in the industry as a whole and automation is amazing. Without oversight, it's kind of terrifying, right? You wouldn't just go and write a whole bunch of scripts, pop it out there and just be like, yeah, everything's all good. You're gonna keep monitoring it, watching for error logs, see if things stop running, whatever happens. Well, when it comes to your billing, 
it's tough to trust the computers all the time that they just went and grabbed a, ca uh, a usage count and popped it onto the PSA agreement. And, and wow, that bill just went out the door. Maybe we were sampling some licenses to somebody but still needed to monitor it. Maybe we decided to include something. So from here, we're able to bring in that information, all that usage information, and do an immediate and automated comparison of what's in your PSA, what was billed the last time, or what you're set to bill this time. And then on the other side, what is being used or deployed by that vendor. From there, once you've approved it or made any adjustments that you see necessary on one single clean screen, then we'll deposit that downstream into your PSA agreements. Again, eliminating that five to 20 hours. And on average, what we're finding, 4,500 mouse clicks um, of, of just writing that in there. There's no more human error. There's no more typos. There's no missed clicks, anything else. It just finds its way to your, to your PSA agreements. And from there, the rest of the, the mile, last mile happens, right? The PSA takes it downstream to your accounting package. Invoices are generated and go out the door. This time, accurately. You've now captured your revenue that you weren't uh, billing for. You've resolved and mitigated the chances that you're you're billing for something that's not in use or too many licenses. And generally, you've saved a ton of time. Um, so just, just to get all that stuff in. So, you know, we've got a number of partners that work with us and, and use the solution and, and a number of them joint with LionGuard. But, <clears throat> excuse me, one in particular, we talked to Shelly over at interlace.io. Um, good sized MSP, but when we dug in with her to look at what this was able to do for, for their business, they were able to find $15,000 in monthly recurring revenue that they weren't billing for. So when you look at scale as a business, again, across 17 plus services, 30 plus clients or customers, all these different end, end users, it's really easy to miss out on things that are getting deployed. They took their process from two weeks down to a matter of hours. Like I said earlier, we had another partner that was six hours down to less than an hour. Um, so you get all of that time back, time to work on forecasting, projections, other strategic planning and initiatives, selling things, doing things. And then the big, big hit is to the brand. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, you know, we, we hear the saying all the time that, that trust is built in drops and lost by buckets. Right. So every time you hit your SLA, awesome. You get a drop into the bucket. When you keep uptime, hey, you drop into the bucket. You solve the thing, awesome. Another drop into the bucket. Then all of a sudden, a bad or inaccurate invoice comes in. That causes a massive leak. Again, 99 things right, one thing wrong. That's what you get judged on. And so this is just one sing single use case or, or case study here that, that just shows the magnitude that you can be dealing with. Right can take some MSPs and many MSPs from break even or maybe not profitable into that profit territory and give you that money to reinvest back in the business. Um, to, in general, you look at it, the, the MSP life can be different. We focus so much on delivering technology and automation to our clients, but less about how we're using it internally. You look at the unbilled revenue that you can recapture that can make a significant, significant impact back to your business. You've got the customer trust side where you can improve that trust, where you're not overbilling or you're not charging for services that haven't been deployed, that transparency and, and honesty side, right? You've got your process efficiency. Imagine being able to do for your back office what you've already done for your front office as an MSP and leveraging pretty much the existing tool stack that you're using to do that today. Um, gain back, again, wealth of hours, increase capacity, uh, allow just you can save cost on, on, on that side or just, again, focus on more valuable endeavors and, and tasks and initiatives as a business. You get the invoice accuracy. You don't have to cringe or worry every time the accounting um, email bings or, you know, the, the phone's ringing for that because it's, again, another billing complaint that we got overcharged or we missed this or forgot that. Um, you know, you've got, got a whole bunch of stuff. The last two are really huge. And, and uh, you know, when, when you look at it, some people might say, hey, I'm not worried about my overbilling or underbilling, and that might net out, and I'm fairly efficient in it today, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to get some gains there. The other part of it is understanding your profit, profit and revenue visibility. So today, most MSPs look at their business as a factor of overall, am I What's my revenue? What's my profit? And how are those growing? 
And then the next tier down that they go from that is contract by contract. So client by client, how am I profiting? How much revenue am I, I doing? And, and how is that trending? Very few MSPs have taken that next step to, to really understand what's driving their revenue and profit. Generally, the services that you're offering and selling. So to be able to look at this now from a service by service or product by product method, to be able to see what is my revenue and profit on a product by product basis to understand where am I making money and where am I maybe losing money, right? Because in a profitable contract or profitable client, it probably could be a lot more profitable because there might be a service or two where you're underachieving and, and losing money. In those cases, you can retune pricing or maybe decide to drop a certain service and replace it. Um, but giving you that visibility. The other side is a lot of the MSPs that say, hey, I, I pretty much bundle everything and, and I just offer it out and I deliver it. So my billing isn't so much a problem. You know, I got that covered. Well, then it comes down to the stack compliance, right? You are now on the hook. You are now contracted with your clients to be delivering each one of those 17 services to every user at every one of your clients. How certain are you that you have actually deployed all of the right amount of licenses for all of those services at every single client? To be able to sort and view things by a way of understanding, is this service even deployed at that client? And do I have, if I have a client that's 43 seats, you know, and I have 43, 43, 43, 43, are you just trusting that you've got it everywhere? What if there is one that's sitting there at 36 and you now have seven users that maybe don't have MFA or maybe don't have the phishing simulation turned on or some other service that now you're out of stack compliance on and if your clients realize that, that's a risk for your own business there. And again, goes to that customer trust and everything else. So, you know, a whole lot of value to be had by just doing a more efficient, more effective and more accurate billing process and ensuring that you are getting paid for what you deliver, that you are delivering what you're getting paid for, and that everything is just in order as efficiently and accurately as possible. I know Sean's got a good slide here. So we, we deal with, you know, lots of partners between both organizations here. But, you know, I think this is a quick sampling of 20-ish partners um, that are using both Gradient and LionGuard in, in unison and the integrations there to really just harness and get the, the realize the benefits of all of those things that we just talked about. So, you know, no shortage of people that have come before you that have, have tried and tested and proven out this type of solution and are seeing great gains from it. Thank you all so much. Uh, it brings us to the end of the webinar. I want to truly thank you for being part of today's uh, session and your engagement and the answers to all the questions is truly invaluable. A very special appreciation and recognition uh, to Kendricks and to Colin both uh, for sharing their expertise. You were truly the driving force behind the, the insights we gained today. Uh, my role was clicking slides. I had the easy part, but I do appreciate it. Without you two, uh, our partners and our prospects certainly wouldn't have learned what they did today. Uh, now for the, the attendees, if you're truly serious about stopping revenue leaks and propelling your MSP business forward, uh, I suggest you take action now. Uh, I believe in, in our partners that we have talked with, the best next step is to give you firsthand experience of the platform through a live demo. You have a QR code right there. It is secure. You can trust that one. Uh, and it's just one small step that can make a very big impact uh, on your business's success. So go ahead, scan that QR code. It'll bring you to a landing page to register for a demo. And we can do a one-on-one -on -one deep diving into your specific situation, your specific billing practices uh, and your bundling practices and making sure how we're collecting the data and then how we can automate that billing process. Once again, we do appreciate everyone's time and here's to your continued growth. Thank you.